This video goes over how to get topography off of cadmapper.com. So to begin with, I'm going to go to Chrome, look for cadmapper.com, two piece. Um, I'm going to sign in. You probably don't have an account yet, so you can click here and it'll guide you through creating an account, but I'm gonna to try to sign in. Okay, so first thing is I need to search for a location. Um, let's see where it has me right now. I have no idea what this is, so I'm going to look for Baltimore. Um, and now I'm way up at um, Druid Hill, and I really would like to get something that is on um, that is on the root of our um, of our race. So I know that the race is going to be going up this hill. That's the area I'm most interested in. You might choose to do the water feature. You might choose to do an area in um, Patterson Park. That part's up to you. It depends on how you want to set up your rendering. But for me, I'm going to look over here. Um, and I'm going to zoom in, see how much I really want for my rendering. I think I just want to imagine that it's climbing up this corner. Um, maybe I'll come back a little bit. So you're allowed to download up to one kilometer squared. So I can actually get even a bigger area. Um, so I can get, so I can go a lot bigger and see how big I can go. So I'm going to get like a fair, like maybe that much of it. So I'm going to get the whole park in there. Maybe a little bit less. So I'm getting the water in there. I'm getting the science museum in there, getting key highway in there. So I'm getting a good amount of stuff. Um, and that'll just give me some options for what I want to show in this rendering. I am going to export it as a uh, DXF. I want to say that I want my topography in there. Make sure that is checked and contours and you want them every five meters. Um, Okay, 3D buildings if they're available. I'm not going to do the, um, well, maybe I'll do the set false, false height if no 3D data. Um, and we'll make the false height, I think most things in this neighborhood are like two stories high. So I'm going to make the false height 24 feet, um, which in meters, so it's going to be about divided by three. Um, so let's say that's eight meters. Okay, other thing I want to look at for road geometry, I like putting in outlines rather than center lines. I'm going to ask for my, um, right now they have 10, 8, 6, 4. So that's a, a highway would then be 30 feet wide around. Um, that's fine. That's probably about right. Major roads are at 24 feet wide. Um, that's probably also about right. Minor roads at um, 6 times 3 is like 18 feet wide. I might bring this down to Five. I think that's a little bit wide. Um, and paths, I'm going to bring that down even more because I think paths can really be like, you know, six foot paths. Let's put two meters in for that. Okay, so now I have my road geometry set. I have my topography set. Um, I'm putting in the false height for my 3D building, which might be a bad idea, but we'll see how it looks. And I'm exporting to DFX and I have my area highlighted. Okay, so I'm going to click create file. And it's going to take a little bit of time to think. Still thinking, shouldn't take this long. Okay, so this is the map that I'm going to get when I download it. Um, and I can now hit download and it will download. So I'm going to download it to uh, move it somewhere I can find it. So I'm going to go to my micro folder, uh, new folder, week seven. I'm going to drag it into here. Um, I need to extract the files from here so I can click on extract all, extract. And that gives me my files. Okay, great. Now I'm going to open up Rhino. So I'm going to go to File and then Import. 
And I want to find that um, file I just downloaded. So I have it over here. You'll have it wherever you saved it. Um, model layout. We're just going to hit OK for now. I'm assuming that I'm going to have to change the units. So here's my file. As it came in, it came in as a mesh. Um, I can change the perspective view to shaded just to get a view of what I'm looking at. Um, and let's look specific with the perspective. So you can see there's the hill in Fed Hill. Um, there are some of the buildings it put in. Beautiful. Okay. So let's say that to begin with, um, I want to check the size of this and I want it to be in units that I can use. So if you remember, I set paths to be um, two meters wide. So let's see what the distance is right now. Well, first of all, let's see what our units are. Our units right now are millimeters. Okay. Let's see what distance we have between here and here. Two millimeters. Okay, so that means right now um, this is really in this should be in meters and it's showing up as millimeters. So I'm going to go to units. I'm going to change this to meters. Um, and hit OK. And when it says scale model apply 0.001, I want to say no, don't scale the model. OK, so now when I measure it between here and here, I have two meters. OK, so this is the right scale. Um, now, I would rather have the units in feet. So I'm going to type in units and change this to feet, um, feet and inches. That's probably good enough for display precision. I'm going to hit OK. And then this time I do want to scale the model. So I'm going to say um, yes. And so now let's check how wide that path is. It should be somewhere around six feet. Yep, a little bit more. OK, great. So um, next thing I want to do is figure out what is what on here. So I'm going to change some colors so I can understand what's happening. So buildings, I'm going to make brown. Um, water, I'm going to make blue. There's my water. Um, parks, I'm going to make green. Railways, um, I'm going to make those a gray. Outline, um, I'll leave that in black actually. Topography, I'm going to make these a light peach. Tan, whatever. Um, contours, I'm going to make these. So remember, our contours are cut every five meters. I brought those in because sometimes the topography doesn't show up. Um, but actually, we're going to make this much more refined than that. So I can just turn that off. I don't really need those anymore. Um, next, zero layer. Don't know what that's about. Viewport, don't need that. Def points, probably don't need that. Um, I'm not sure what's on all those layers. So I'm going to type in purge. And then I'm going to tell it to purge layers. So I just hit, clicked on the layers, change it to yes, and then I hit enter. Okay, so that got rid of all my layers that nothing was on, which is good. Okay. Next thing I would like to do, um, I want to add in some new topo lines, but I want them to be in feet rather than in meters. So to do that, I'm going to come up to my top view. Um, I'm going to delete this contour. I'm going to select objects on my contours layer and just delete them. Okay, so now I should just have my topography. Great. Um, and I'm going to go back to my top view. And I want to create a plane that's underneath everything. So I'm going to come onto my contours layer. I'm just going to make a box that's a little bit bigger than what I have here and type in planar surf. Okay, enter. So now I have this kind of flat surface underneath everything. And I just want to make sure it really is underneath everything. Um, and it looks like it is, which is good. If there was something that was going beneath this line, I would then um, I would then move this down. OK, next thing I want to do is um, I, I want to recontour this the topography to get contour lines that are closer together. And I want my contour lines every two feet. So I'm going to select this.
going to then contour contour base point is going to be the edge of this pink thing I made. Direction perpendicular is going to be straight up. So I can come into my front view to get a straight up line. Distance between contours, two feet, hit enter. Great, so now I have much closer together topography lines and that'll be more useful to me while I'm designing. Um, next thing I want, I want to be able to change this topography so that I can actually separate out like what's a road versus what is um, a park. I want to separate those out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, copy this layer. So then I'm going to hide that. So I'm going to um, kind of duplicate the whole layer. Let's see, Do -do -do. duplicate layer and objects. Okay, and I'm going to hide that first one. So now I have a brand new one on there. Um, and actually, I can hide this plane down here. I don't need that for the time being. Okay. Um, and actually, I don't need my contour lines right now, so I'm going to hide those two. Okay. So in order to get, and the 3D buildings, I don't know if I feel like looking at them either. So let's hide those. I just wanna like figure out exactly what I wanna look at. Okay, great. So now that these are on here, I wanna split the surface by the lines that are on here so that I can change the layer they're on and change the color. So for example, let's start out with the water and the water looks like it is, so in most cases, it should be that the lines follow the topography. In a couple of these, it might not work. Like, can you see how this is dipping below the topography line? That's super annoying, but it happens. Um, I also know that the water really goes past that. Like, like, right, like this water line, like the topography is longer than the water is there. Uh, or the water keeps going past, even though the topography ends there. That's just like a glitch from when it exported. So... Um, I'm going to take this line and I think in this case, I want to retrace this one. I won't do this for every layer, but I'm going to retrace it for this one just to make my life a little bit easier. Um, so I'm going to make a new layer and call this water surface. Um, change over to here. I'll make it a dark blue so I can distinguish the two. Um, and now I'm going to come to top view. I'm going to put my project on. And then I want to start my line. I can hit tab to keep that line. Um, and then I want to just trace, oops, tab. Okay, now I'm just following the lines that are already there. And some of this is going to be open for interpretation. Like it looks like Um, like here, it looks like the water goes past the path. Actually, that might be true in Minna Harbor. I think there is an area where it, um, there's like a little bridge. So I'll leave that alone. But sometimes it might seem like um, the satellite data is not going to be perfect. So you might have to change some things as you go to make it better and make it more accurate to what you know about the area. So I'm going to join this together. That should have been a flat line side project on. Okay, so I'm going to extrude this in both directions. So extrude, both sides should be on, and you can bring it nice and tall. Then I'm going to select this and type in split. Um, select object to split is going to be on photography. Uh, let me type in split. Split, select object to split should be topography. Why can't I select it? Oh, because it's a mesh. Beautiful. Um, Okay, so we could keep it a mesh, but I think I'd rather change it to a poly surface so it's the same as everything else. So let's actually delete this. Turn on your contours. Um, you can delete that very outer line there. Um, and now what I want you to do is hide everything except your contours. Sorry for backtracking here. Okay. Um, select all these lines, type in points on, then type in patch, select everything there, and hit enter. Um, and then let's hit preview and see what it looks like. 
So let's see if it like looks like it's still kind of keeping the same topography. I think it looks pretty good. Um, okay, once we're happy with it, we can hit OK. Okay, so now if I turn on the other topography, it should be pretty similar to that. So there's a couple of places that it looks like they interpret it a little bit differently, but overall pretty similar. Okay, so I can keep those off. So this is my new topography and I will just make it a new layer, new topo, uh, and I'll make that, I don't know, orange, okay, um, change object layer. Okay, so I have my new topography um, in top view. I'm gonna turn everything else back on a second. Um, okay, so I think one thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to trim off the edges of this topography so it's not so large. So I'm gonna double click on new topo, just create a rectangle. I'm gonna bring it inside all the lines I have. Starting here, go over to here. Okay, so I know that I always have information that's at least up to that line. Then I'm going to take it, hit extrude. Extrude curve, both sides, yes. Besides, sides, yes. Okay, and we're gonna bigger than everything else. Um, and then what I wanna do is trim out everything outside that box. So I'm gonna type in trim. The cutting objects will be that square I made and then trim out that. And then I even wanna trim out all like the lines that are going past here. So I'm just trim out all that stuff. That way it won't be a bother when I am um, making my drawings later that I have this kind of uneven edge. It should now all have a square edge, which will be a lot nicer. It should even work on um, the building layer. It doesn't look like it is. Oh, I guess because those are meshes. So anything that's a mesh is not going to trim. That way you have to do mesh split. Um, I'm anticipating that you're not going to use the edge buildings in your render, so I'm not even going to bother fixing that. I'm not too worried about it. Okay, if it does become an issue, we can, there's a command that's called um, mesh to nerves, and we can always translate those into um, poly surfaces so that Rhino's happy and will cut those. Um, but for right now, I think we don't have to worry about that. Okay, so other than the meshes, I think everything is now split. Okay, I'm going to delete that. I'm done with it. Let's look where we are. Okay, so we have everything we need now, I believe. Okay, so first thing I wanted to do was split up this surface so that we could um, split up the surface so that we can um, create different surfaces from it. So I'm going to actually create a copy of this. So I'm going to do duplicate layer, control Z. I need duplicate layer and objects, my bad. Right click, duplicate a layer in objects. So that's what I'm gonna hide and just save for later because I might need it. Um, this one, the old topography layers, I'm gonna delete, I don't need them anymore. Delete, yes, and the other topography, delete. I wanna try to keep things clean. So it's, the more I delete things, the less I'll be confused like what all these layers are later. Okay, don't need my contours anymore, I'm gonna hide those. Um, I'm gonna take this mesh that's on new topo and I'm gonna split it. Um, with this, uh, the border I made before, and it's in two pieces. Great, now I'm going to change this over to my water surface layer. Okay, so there's my water. Um, next thing, let's get roads in here. So I don't know how happy roads will be. Let's try, I think roads are on the outline layer. So we're gonna select that. And this might be a mess. Let's give it a try. So I'm going to make a new layer and call this one um, Road Surface. 
change this color. Okay, so all these lines, um, I think I want to reproject them onto the surface and then split. I think that's my best bet rather than trying to like actually trim everything out. I think that's going to be too much pain in the butt. So let's give that a chance. So I'm going to move all the lines up first. So I'm going to come into one of my orthogonal views, my front view, just move everything straight up. And then in top view, um, I'm going to type in project. It wants to know what surfaces, poly surfaces, and meshes to project onto. Make sure you're selected on the right surface layer. So I'm going to select um, my topography and hit enter. Now it's going to take some time thinking. What it's doing, it's retaking all of those lines and it's putting them right onto that surface. So before there was kind of a mismatch between some of those lines on the surface. Now they should actually all be touching that surface. That is the goal. Um, I'm going to hide my outline layer. Okay, so with all of that selected, um, those all look okay to me. So now I'm going to select this, um, or select this topography and type in split. Then to select cutting objects, I'm going to right click on my um, road surface layer and say select objects and then hit enter. And now it's splitting and it's thinking. This is going to take it a minute because it is a little bit complicated. Okay, so we're going to hope that that actually works. So that created, that looks like that's all ones. So let's see if this works. So I'm going to hit change object layer. Okay, great. So there are my roads. Um, the roads, the pads, anything paved is basically one color in this. You might find that, oh, I really want um, the sidewalk to be a different color than the road or whatever. And those are things you can figure out later. Um, next thing is figuring out, okay, do I need to split up the park more? Or is this already basically parkland? Um, so there's a few areas where the park needs to get split up more. Because you can see that like this is the area for the park and like some of it intersects um, what's already there. So I'm going to, for the park areas, I think I'm going to treat those more similarly to how we treated the water. So let's select all the parks. I'm going to select objects. I think I got them all. Okay. And those I'm going to... Um, do extrude, curve, both sides, make sure my parks layer, which I'm not. Okay. Bring those up nice and tall. Okay, great. Now I need to select my topography. So I'm going to select on here, select objects. Um, and now I want to type in split. And I'm going to select my cutting object. It's going to be the surface that went through, hit enter. And it's thinking, still thinking. Okay, I'm now gonna delete all those. Okay, so now when I go through, it's gonna be in pieces because these are separate from the road pieces. Um, I'll make a new layer called Park Surface. Um, but I should be able to highlight all the pieces of the park and change them to my new park surface layer. And maybe I'll make this a dark green so we can see it. Um, this area, I know it's a park, but it's like not a green park, I don't think. I think this is like, um, this is stadium seating. So this is rash field. I think there's like some grass in here, but I think it's also a lot of sand. So maybe I'll change this to like a um, concrete layer instead. I'll leave those ones as grass. I'm not sure they are grass. I can look at the, we should actually look at the Google Maps. Okay, so maps.google.com. Let's look at brush fields. And if I put this into satellite mode, oh, I'm wrong. There is mostly grass around that. Okay. Um, well, this part's not grass, though. That's definitely still like road surface color. That's concrete. Um, Rashfield itself is 
sand and that's grass around it. Okay, so let's do, um, let's do a concrete layer for all this stuff or a paver layer and then um, go back to grass. So I'm going to make another one and call this one paver, uh, concrete pavers. Change this like a tan. Hit OK. I'm going to right click and change object layer. OK. Um, and then this stuff all inside here, I'm not going to bother making the sand. I'm just going to make all this grass colored. Or I guess I can make each one of those little things sand. Sure, why not? Um, so I'll change this to park surface. And I'm going to change all these little ones. into sand. Okay, so I got that. Um, this one, what is that? That looks like it's a little thing of sand too. Okay, cool. Or is that a little thing of sand? That might be a little thing of sand. Okay, we're looking at it this way. So there should be like a gazebo thing, something there, something there. Gazebo thing. Oh, that's a little Japanese garden. Okay. So this we're gonna make sand as well. And it's not gonna be perfectly accurate and that's okay. We're just getting the basic idea in there. Um, so I think this was all grass. around this thing. So I'm going to change that to my uh, park surface layer. I think I'm going to actually turn off the lines here because I don't need them anymore. Um, how's that starting to look? It's getting better. I'm still missing some parts of the park that are in here. Um, I don't know what those are. So here I'm just splitting up my screen so I can kind of look at the two at the same time and figure out like, okay, what else is on here that I want to add? That looks like the sidewalks are like brick colored. So I might do every surface that's not um, papers as like some kind of brick. Um, any other major green spots? So I'm oriented like this right now. So I got those major green spots in there. Um, I think that's good enough for what we're doing. Okay. If I wanted to, I could go into a lot more detail and get this um, exactly like the surfaces are, but I think like it'll be good enough is my thought. Okay. So we have all that in there. Um, we don't really need our lines anymore, so I think I'm going to give this a save. Oh, I haven't saved at all, that's not good. So make sure you know where you're saving things, as always. So I'm going to call this sitemap um, and save it. Okay, and that's how you get your sitemap in here. You can also hide all your lines that you don't need. So why don't we um, separate out what's 3D and what's not. So concrete pavers, the sands, the new topo are 3D, the road surface is 3D, the outlines are not, so they're turned off. The railways, we're not putting those in, so we're gonna keep those off. Water surface is the 3D version, so we're gonna leave that on. Um, turn off the water layer. Buildings are 3D, okay. Um, all the ones that are not 3D, I'm going to delete in my new file. Um, but for right now, I'll worry about that later. So for right now, just hit save. Okay, so we're going to go to one of two things. Either you are making a site model of this, and I'll do that in a separate tutorial just to show you how to make site models. You're not making one for my class. Um, 
And then the other tutorial will show you how to um, bring this into Lumion.